The buyer didn't get finance, are you kidding me? Welcome back to Making Sense of Real Estate. Bill Jones, Remax and Lumber Results Realty. And this week on Making Sense of Real Estate, we're talking about why house closings fall through or potential hazards you'd have with that with a, a home not closing once it's gone under contract. So the buyer didn't get financed. Uh, happens more than we'd like to talk about sometimes, but it does happen. What typically comes up is it might be a someone with uh, little or limited credit first time home buyer, not trying to pick on them. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But sometimes there'd be issues with their financing to where their credit doesn't help them. Maybe they were just borderline when they got started and there's been a change of circumstance. And then the deal ends up falling through because the financing in the end doesn't come together. We work with a lot of great lenders. That is usually not ever an issue, but sometimes it does happen. Deals do fall apart sometimes. Uh, we'll talk more this week about inspections and things like that that come up. So um, not having a pre-approval letter, and we'll talk more about that here in a second, makes a huge difference. So um, you want to make sure they have a full pre-approval letter. They've been fully vetted as much as they can do. Um, they're actually looking at income. They're looking at W-2s as much as they can. So not so much just the quick online presence to where, you know, you type in a few numbers and the computer is going to believe what I put in there. So you want to make sure as, as someone that's been qualified that has been been vetted and gone through. If they've had major changes since their pre-approval letter, this being the buyer, something comes up, maybe a job change, maybe they've had an income change, maybe just a change in circumstance from when they originally put their offer in to, to now when they're trying to close on a property. That might be a reason they're not getting financed now. It would be simply with that. Maybe they got pre-qualified and they weren't totally honest with the loan originator then too. Maybe they had some things come up, uh, you know, it could be anything, a job change, some bills, you know, child support, things like that, that they maybe weren't comfortable talking about or they forgot to mention. Could be a, a reason why somebody doesn't get qualified in the end and why they can't follow through with purchasing the home. Um, down payment money then too, that's another thing to where they have estimated X amount of dollars to close on a home. So if they don't have that money anymore or that amount changes and they just simply can't come up with it, they might not be able to close on the loan and get, and get it done then. So that might be a reason why it falls apart. So a uh, big, big reason for to get pre-approved. Sellers, make sure your buyers have a pre-approval letter. Buyers, get out there and get a pre-approval letter. You know, get that submitted to the bank. Make sure you've got all your information in and you can move forward with purchasing your home and hopefully a successful closing. But this week, we're going to talk about why deals fall apart. It's unfortunate, but it happens and we're going to talk about it and we'll keep making sense of real estate. Again, we try to make, uh, you know, bigger issues and put them into bite-sized pieces. We can go from there. So give us your questions. Uh, we have a live Q&A on Friday. Uh, we're live right now. So if you've got any questions now, let us know. Um, if not, we will uh, check back in again tomorrow and again, a live Q&A on Friday. So thanks for checking in.